Eric Huyard comes originally from Michigan in the U.S. He took up kung fu at high school and quickly became hooked. However, unlike many other martial arts practitioners who dream of proving themselves as a kung fu master, Eric's motivation is rather different and more down to earth. So I just practice martial arts for fun. It's really a hobby of mine. Um, I'm not trying to become a superhero or anything like that. I've never even really been in a fight. My only experience in competitions was when I was about 16 years old. Uh, I was in a competition at my school, and uh, I fought a kid who I didn't know at the time, who was 11 years old, <laughs> and I beat that kid up, and that was uh, that's how I got third place in that competition. But that's pretty much the extent of my martial arts competition experience. Practicing kung fu in the U.S. led Eric into studying Chinese. Almost without a second thought, when he entered the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, he chose the language as one of his majors. He'd never set foot outside the U.S. before, but the more he mastered the Chinese language, the more he dreamed of traveling out east. It was 2007 when he first visited China. After that, he returned every year. He also spent a semester as an international student at Beijing Foreign Studies University. With time, and as his language skills improved, he developed a genuine fondness for China. What I like most about China is just that it's different from what I'm used to. I guess I like weird stuff just because I feel like the more different something is from me, the more I can learn from it. Every time he came to China, it seemed he made a new discovery. The more he visited, the more his fascination for the country grew. Back in the U.S., Eric had landed a good job after his graduation. But in 2013, he quit. He had decided to go and live in China. Getting a job at Google is pretty difficult to do, at least in the U.S. So after I got that job at Google, I thought, well, I just did something that's pretty hard. What is something else that I could do is, that's also pretty hard, but is at the same time pretty awesome? And I thought to myself, well, I really like uh, China, I really like Kung Fu, and I really like movies. Maybe I should go to China to try to be in Kung Fu movies. So this place is called the Crazy Fist Society. And when I first moved to Beijing, I used to train here all the time, different kinds of martial arts and those types of things. So pretty important place for my life in Beijing. So why don't we go check it out? Hey,好久不见。怎么样？还挺好。啊，挺好啊，还行。最近拍戏了吗？最近拍了，拍了一点点，拍了不少你的。哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！啊，还行，拍了一广告
and that is one of the fundamental skills of Chinese internal styles martial arts. Today, my teacher is having a meeting with some of his fans, the people who have watched the TV shows, things like that. Uh, I'm going to help him teach some of these people some of the techniques that I've been studying. Uh, so come on, check it out. <laughs> Eric and his teacher became famous in China's Kung Fu circles after appearing on China Central Television in a program called Experiencing Real Kung Fu. It was Eric's first public performance since coming to China. In it, he treated blows with a number of skilled Kung Fu practitioners. Uh 呃，我我跟艾瑞克在这一路上从各大门派里面所吸收的一些营养，然后把它分享给大家。So this is Yip Man. He is the master of Bruce Lee. Um, Bruce Lee is a master of a guy named Dan Osanto, who's a Filipino American, and Dan Osanto is my master's master. So it goes Bruce Lee. Dan Osanto, my teacher, me. So I'm four generations away from Bruce Lee. The name Bruce Lee is synonymous with Kung Fu. It was perhaps inevitable that Eric's connection through his teacher with a great Kung Fu master and movie star would eventually lead him into acting. With his fluent Chinese and his ability at Kung Fu, Eric was soon being offered movie roles. Uh, I think I've been in five movies so far, and I usually play bad guys in just typical roles that foreigners would play in Chinese movies, never like huge roles. Although he has yet to be offered a major part, Eric remains optimistic. So, in order to promote myself, since most directors, producers, uh, casting directors don't really know who I am, uh, there's, just, there's, a, there's a list on WeChat of all the different production companies that are going on. I basically go through that list and call everybody uh, just as a way to promote myself and get my name out there. Hi, So I call so many people on this list, I can't really remember who I've talked to and who I haven't talked to, so a lot of times I end up calling the same people twice and I kind of look like a big idiot, but <laughs> that's the way it goes. Well, there's a word in Chinese called Bei Piao. You can consider myself as being a part of that population. In China, it's kind of a different kind of happiness.
Well, there's a word in Chinese called Beipiao. It means like the floating population of Beijing. And uh, I guess you could consider myself as, as being a part of that population. They call it floating because the people, a lot of the population that comes to Beijing, it feels like they have no roots. And I guess I feel the same way. Like, I don't really have any family here. I have some friends here. They're good friends, but they're not, uh, it's not the same as family. It's not the same as being back home. Beipiao, or Beijing floater, refers to people not originally from Beijing who are living or working in the city. Most of them, when they first arrive, have no fixed residence and regularly move from place to place. Because they give the impression of floating around and don't feel they belong to the city, they are called Beipiao. Many of Eric's friends are fellow Beipiao. When he gets together with them is when he is at his happiest. Being a Bei Piao is often tough, especially for someone like Eric who comes from a different country. Having such good friends is one reason why he has stayed. Yo! Hey, <laughs> hey how Hanging out with his friends never fails to raise his spirits. These are some of my friends that I've met since moving to Beijing. I met a lot of friends here. Um, and my friends are super important to me because basically anything that I need to do in China, I have to find friends to help me do it. Because if I don't find Chinese people to help me do these things, I'm probably going to end up spending five times more time and five times more money than a normal Chinese person would do. So that's pretty, that can be pretty frustrating. Um, there's a lot of frustrating things about being in China, and my living conditions in China certainly aren't as good as they were in America. Um, I'm making less money, um, I don't really have a stable job, stable lifestyle, but at the same time, when I'm in China, I'm pursuing things that are important to me, pursuing my dreams of acting in movies or whatever. Um, whereas in America, I, the things that I was doing to make money weren't really making me happy. So in China, it's kind of a different kind of happiness.他就是特别努力一毛这个人他每天都在坚持练功他自己就原则性特别强特别特别心细跟小姑娘似的每次见面反正他都得是买点什么小吃的每回见面哪怕一个苹果俩苹果什么的来特别懂礼貌然后人也
你找到位置啊，这儿这儿吗？嗯，手指再往下一点。OK， 这样，一二三，一抖，让它进去。一二三，疼吗？嗯，不怎么疼。一边转，一边往下，听着，感没感觉到有点胀？胀什么意思？你马上就会知道什么意思。奇怪的一个感觉，对，就是这个感觉。嗯，当拔针的时候呢，先慢慢捻转几下，啊，一边捻转一边把它往外带，一边往外拔，然后快拔出来的时候呢，咻，然后马上堵住，一边捻转一边往外拔，对，摁住它，摁住它，摁住。嗯，没问题吧？嗯，没问题。就是这样。So I just stabbed myself. With this needle,、um, it felt pretty weird. It didn't. It didn't really hurt.、Uh, it almost felt like the muscles, like in my palm, were、uh, like tightening. I don't know. It was a really strange feeling,、um, but it didn't really hurt very much. Maybe it hurt a little bit when I was like twisting it, but yeah, pretty weird feeling, and also pretty weird to stab myself. I've never done that before. So, yeah. In ways like this. Under the instruction of Master Zhao, Eric has not only improved his kung fu, but also gained a more complete understanding of traditional Chinese culture. Kung fu and calligraphy have a lot in common. Some people argue that calligraphy is a form of kung fu practice. Calligraphy needs a strong wrist, but most importantly. It requires an ability to direct one's strength to the wrist through concentration. Without that ability, one cannot generate the vigor needed to produce certain calligraphy strokes. In other words, a master calligrapher with the ability to direct his strength has a skill necessary for being a master also of internal skill style martial arts. It's with this in mind. That Master Zhao makes calligraphy part of Eric's daily training. So this is my first piece of calligraphy.、Uh, it was pretty fun. I think I'll probably start practicing this on my own. Everything about Chinese culture and history fascinates Eric. This is 什么东西？啊，你好，这是中国的传统荷香。啊，请坐。啊，谢谢。中国香文化呢，非常的源远,远流长，至少已有六千年的历史了。那早在汉代的时候呢，就形成了荷香的规制，是由汉武帝规范的。其实做香并不难，做这个篆香，嗯，关键是要静心。挺难的。慢慢来。就是四十五度的角，然后去把香灰填在这个空槽里面。So this is my first time experiencing the, I guess, incense ceremony. Xiang Dao, pretty cool. I don't know, pretty weird. Never really done anything like it. It's interesting. It's like a ancient Chinese secret thing. Pretty relaxing. Smells really nice. Pretty fun. Eric is curious about everything to do with China, whether traditional or modern. Hey, hello, hello. Come with me. Let's dance together. Actually, my first time coming to China, I found this Guangchang Wu. I think it's really nice. I want to try it. Okay, okay, okay. Square dancing, Chinese style, involves large groups of people getting together in public spaces. They dance as a form of exercise. 
So what these people are doing behind me is called Guangtang Wu, means something like public square dancing. Uh, I think it's really fun. The first time I came to China, it was something that really attracted me. I think it's cool because in America, most retired people, and most of these women are retired, would not be outside exercising like this, especially not in weather like this. Um, so I think it's a cool way for people to get together and have fun and also exercise at the same time. You oh, right? yeah. oh. 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 the so <笑> For those of you who have never siphoned gas before, it's a pretty terrible experience. In order to make a little bit of extra money, I started teaching English. 他的底线那种教学的方式让我很自然的就接受了像一个有着外国人脸的中国人六块一斤六块一斤行那我来几个吧行好谢谢谢谢拜拜 so these are a certain kind of pair. Uh, I've never seen them in America before, but I don't know, maybe they're there. Uh, I guess they come from northeastern China. They're really sour, and I like them a lot. So yeah, I bought some. Hey, so uh, welcome to my apartment. It's pretty similar to what I'm used to in America. Um, the conditions are pretty good. Uh, there's a few things that are a little bit uh, not so good. One of them is this washing machine. And it's a really terrible machine, and it causes me a great deal of frustration. Sometimes the tube is out here, and then my whole apartment becomes a swimming pool. Whoops, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, a really terrible machine. Sometimes I get really angry at it. There's a big dent in it right here from when I kicked it one time. <laughs> I enter from Detroit. So in order to make a little bit of extra money, I started teaching English. Um, a lot of the people I was trying to teach English to asked me if I could teach them on WeChat. So I started teaching English on WeChat. This is my public WeChat account. I've got a bunch of different articles in here that I wrote about. Eric also teaches English one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> this second-hand motorcycle is Eric's main means of transport in Beijing. He relies on it so much that it regularly runs out of fuel. If there's no filling station nearby, his only option is to call a friend for help. So for those of you who have never siphoned gas before, it's a pretty terrible experience. Uh, sometimes you get gasoline in your mouth, and even if you don't get gasoline in your mouth, you're definitely going to inhale gas fumes directly into your lungs. So uh, it's a pretty unpleasant experience, but sometimes it's the only way I can get gas, so I always carry this with me. So this is my friend's hair salon. Um, I come here to hang out all the time. My friend's name is Da Tong, which means Big Onion. Hair salon seems like a weird place to hang out. Well, they do a lot more than just cutting hair here. They throw parties and do weird stuff like that. 
And I also come here sometimes to teach English. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You uh, make drinks? Drinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You know, uh, Bloody Mary. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, with Coke. Bloody, Bloody Mary with Coke? Bloody Mary oh, okay. and uh, with Coke. Oh, okay, and, uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 okay. 会让你的自信就没了。对对对，我跟一茂认识有差不多有两三年的时间了吧。我跟他学英文也学了有大概一不到一年吧。他既是我的朋友，也是我的英语老师。我觉得他的一些那种教学的方式让我很自然的就接受了，而且学习的很快，然后感到很舒服。哎，达森。哎，这是达森啊。Da Tung was the first Chinese friend Eric made after he moved to Beijing. The two men are very close and spend a lot of time together. Even when Da Tung is too busy to talk to him, Eric still enjoys his company. I met Yi Mo for about two years. When he first came to Beijing, we met. It felt like a Chinese person with a Chinese face. He has a Chinese way of thinking and is very familiar with Chinese culture. It's not always easy living in a foreign country. For Eric, it can be frustrating when he thinks about the future. I haven't really decided yet if I want to stay in China or go back to America. I feel like I came to China to accomplish the dream of being in movies, making kung fu movies, and I've kind of done that. And right now I'm trying to decide if I want to stay here, keep making movies, or if I want to go back to America uh, to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life.